What's up guys, this is the 3D render passage tutorial I promised in the visual effects breakdown of real life cheat codes. Now as you can see I'm in 3D's Max with my scene all set up and ready for rendering which I'll do in three passes, the original, the shadows, and the ambient occlusion. Now the beauty of using multiple passes is that you can later composite them in a program like After Effects for a more realistic look, which I'll be showing you later. So let's get started. So first things first, we need to make sure that we have our sign renderer set up to mental ray. So we'll go into the common tab and then make sure that that's selected. All right, so now we're gonna go into the environment and uncheck the use map, which I was using earlier. And now we're gonna right click on anything that's casting a shadow and then select object properties and then uncheck cast shadows, then click okay. All right, now that we have that set up, we can now get ready for rendering. So go to render setup, select your preferences and now we'll scroll down and then select the render output and we'll save it as our original pass. And be sure to save it with transparency, in this case I'm using PNG. Alright, now click render. Alright, so now that that's done, it's time to move on to the shadows. So now we're going to do the exact opposite and then right click on, the, on what was casting shadows and then go to object properties and then recheck cast shadows but uncheck visible to camera. Now click OK. Now we can set it up for rendering once again. Save it out as the shadow map and save it out as the shadow pass and then click render. Alright so now that that's done you can see that it worked by toggling the alpha channel. We are now going to create the ambient occlusion. So now we want to undo everything we did and make everything visible to the camera once again. And then we also want to make sure that we don't have anything set as our exposure control because that will mess up the ambient occlusion. Now we're going to our material editor and we are going to create the ambient occlusion material. So click on an empty slate. I'm renaming it to ambient occlusion. Click standard. Click mental ray. Now on surface click none and then click ambient reflective occlusion. So the samples to 45, the spread to 1, and the max distance to about 20. In this case, you can play around with it. All right, so now we're going to go to our render setup under the processing tab. We're going to check material override, and we're going to drag that material as an instance into the slot. All right, now anything we render out will have that material overridden on everything. So now we're going to export it out as our ambient occlusion pass and click render. All right, so the ambient occlusion pass is done. And as you can see, it contains all the contact shadows that you want for a realistic look and 3D rendering. And now we will resume the tutorial in After Effects where we will composite everything together. So here we are now in After Effects with all the footage imported into the project panel. And normally you guys would have sequences. In that case, you'd want to right click on every single asset, interpret footage, then main, and confirm the frame rate to be correct. But in this case, I just used pictures for the tutorial's sake. So now we want to import all these assets into our composition in this order. We want the shadows to be on the bottom above the base footage, then the original, and then the ambient occlusion. And first off you want the ambient occlusion to be set to multiply in the transfer modes. So we're going to click toggle switches and then right here we're going to add it, we're going to select multiply. Now as you can see the ambient occlusion adds contact shadows to the effect. And now the beauty of having all these in separate render passes is that we can independently edit the shadows and the opacity and add effects to them. So I see the shadows are really harsh in the scene. So we can turn these down to say 90 or even 85. And then we could also add blur if needed. So you can go to effect, blur, fast blur, P edge pixels, maybe about two. As you can see, it doesn't affect anything else because it's a separate layer. And another thing that may happen when rendering out 3D is you may get aliasing along the original pass. And that's just due to 3D's max render settings. You could learn how to fix those. But normally, in my case, I always composite in After Effects. And an easy fix for this is just to select the original pass and then click Effect, Matte, and Simple Choker. And then just set it to about one and you can see that that now chokes it away. So I hope that you see how important it is 
to use these render passes and how important ambient occlusion shadows are in the scene to get a realistic look when integrating 3D with live action footage. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Make sure you comment, rate, like, and subscribe. And also be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions and be sure to leave tutorial suggestions. Thanks.